Hello everyone, I welcome you all on the YouTube channel of Analyst IES. Our today's topic for focus of the day discussion is the deep ocean circulation. So we will see why in news, what is deep ocean circulation, what is Panama hypothesis, what are the highlights of the study, then we will see ocean current movements in the Indian Ocean. After that, what are the drawbacks of the study? Then we will come to a prelims practice question and the mains practice question. And this topic is important for both of the exams, pre and the mains as well. Here in this area, there is deep water formation. You can see it here and here as well. And after that, you can see in red color. This is the surface current and in the blue is the deep current. So why in news? A new study by a team of researchers from the Goa-based National Center for Polar and Ocean Research and the School of the Earth, Ocean and Atmospheric Sciences at Goa University has generated an orthogenic neodymium isotope record from the Arabian Sea and reconstructed the DWC record of the Indian Ocean for the period from 11.3 million years ago which was Miocene era to 1.98 million years ago which is Pleistocene era. So what is deep ocean circulation really mean? It refers to the movement of water in the deep ocean. It is derived by density differences between water masses and caused by variation in the temperatures and salinity as well. In the earth's polar regions, ocean waters get very cold forming sea ice. As a consequence, the surrounding sea waters get saltier day by day because when ice sea forms, the salt is left behind in the sea. As the sea water gets saltier, its density increases, obviously it will increase and it starts to sink down. The surface water is pulled in to replace the sinking water, which in turn eventually becomes cold and salty again enough to sink. This creates a circulation pattern. This is known as the thermohaline circulation. I hope you all understand the dense water will basically sink and the surface water will be pulled towards it and this cycle will just go on repeating. So this is what deep ocean circulation is. Then we will see what is Panama hypothesis. The Panama hypothesis states that the gradual closure of the Panama Seaway between 13 million years ago and 2.6 million years ago led to decreased mixing of Atlantic and the Pacific water masses. I hope you all remember where is Isthmus of Panama. It is between the North America and the South America and now it will separate the Pacific and the Atlantic. The formation of the North Atlantic deep water and strengthening of the Atlantic thermohaline circulation, increased temperatures and evaporation in the North Atlantic, increased precipitation in Northern Hemisphere high latitudes culminating in the intensification of the northern hemisphere glaciation during the Pliocene era which is 3.2 to 2.7 million years ago. So the closure of the Panama Seaway and the onset of the northern hemisphere glaciation. You can see when we put the hypothesis to test there is the closure of the seaway here the seaway closures which results into enhancement of the Atlantic circulation which results into warmer sea surface temperature, increased evaporation at the high latitudes, then increase in precipitation and inception of northern hemisphere glaciation. Here you can see there is cutoff of warm salty water inflow from here and there is cutoff of cool low salinity water outflow from the here as it closes. So this is what it does. Then we will see what are the highlights of the study. The scientists have generated an orthogenic neodymium isotope record from the Arabian Sea and reconstructed the DWC record of the Indian Ocean for the period from 11.3 million years ago which was Miocene era to 1.98 million years ago which was from the Pleistocene era. The record shows a clear shift from the Pacific water dominated deep circulation system before about 9 million years ago to the onset of a modern like deep water circulation system in the Indian Ocean nowadays. It comprises of Antarctic bottom water and northern component water during the Miocene-Pliocene transition which was about 6 million years ago. 
This suggests a widespread impact of the late Miocene Central American Seaway closure, Panama closure, on the evolution of the ocean deep water circulation and validates the so called Panama closure hypothesis. I hope you have understood it right now. So, here you can see the Indian Ocean, and here was the Panama Isthmus. Here you can see that the this side of the Indian Ocean is basically near the area where deep water circulation basically origins. Now we will see Indian Ocean movement. The Indian Ocean does not produce its own deep water. It only receives it from other sources such as North Atlantic and Antarctic. The northern part of the Indian Ocean is located far away from the areas where deep water is formed and ocean routes making it a good place to study the impact of ocean circulation changes. Remember this was the area of the deep ocean for, uh, formation. Now we will see and uh, studies have been done in the Indian Ocean to understand past deep water circulation using records from the iron manganese crusts and orthogenic neodymium isotope composition of sediment ores. So these are the basically currents of the Indian Ocean in the winters. You can see the north equatorial current here. It goes like this. Then you can see the counter equatorial current. After that you can also see south equatorial current wave goes from here through the Mozambique current and the Agulhas current. Then you can also see the west wind drift here. And this is the west Australian current as well. This one is cold and you can see these one is these are hot. After that, we will see what are the drawbacks of the report. The iron manganese crests are found at deeper depths and are only bathed by Antarctic bottom water. So they can only provide information about the history of Antarctic bottom water as they are present in high quantity. After that, orthogenic neodymium isotope records are only available from the Bay of Bengal region but they are also not accurate as the Himalayan rivers that flow in the Bay of Bengal region bring in a lot of neodymium particles which can interfere with the results. Now we will come to our today's prelims practice question that with the reference to Atlantic meridional overtuning circulation consider the following statements. First, it is a large system of ocean currents that carry warm water from the tropics northwards into the North Atlantic. Second, it brings warmth to various parts of the globe and also carries nutrients necessary to sustain ocean life. Which of the following statements are correct? You can try to answer it in the comment sections given below. There we will let you know if it's correct or not. Now we will come to our today's main practice question that what are the forces that influence ocean currents describe their role in fishing industry of the world. This question came in this year itself and this video can also give you many materials you can write in it. This was all about today's topic. Stay tuned for the next video. Have a great day.